monetize it. And I don't really, I don't want to become the poster child for it. I, my activism is being do what I do. I, I was uh, doing comedy. I happened to be trans. I was uh, acting, dramatic acting. I happened to be trans. And then uh, running a marathon, I happened to be trans. It's like I play the piano. No one goes on about me playing the piano. And I can play the piano. But it's, it's really not part of the... <laughs> Oh. It, sounds, it sounds like that's really pained you there, Eddie, that nobody no, talks about your magnificent piano no, it's, playing. It's, how did you in your how did you come to understand the difference between transvestitism uh, uh, and transgenderism? It's only language. Language changes. So um, when I came out, I was actually TV. If anyone was paying attention in 85, um, I didn't get the front cover of anything when I came out. So in 85... Mm-hmm non-people, we were toxic people. I say the gay and lesbian community had done great work and made it, but it was LGB. Now, you know, the B wasn't there, then the B was in. And we, transvestite is a, a transsexual. These are, these are Latin words, you know, hadn't been updated since the Romans. Not good words, as you can understand, Ruth. So uh, it was TV and TS when I came out, I was TV. And I would tell people I'm a TV and they'd say, you're a television? How, how does that work? And so, okay. And then I thought the transvestite word, like the word queer, has been reclaimed. So I was reclaiming the word transvestite and saying, action transvestite because I was running, executive transvestite because I was doing all right, you know, because we were considered non-people outside of society. And I realized that transgender was the real overarching word. So I thought I was transgender, that trans, trying to get the right words was difficult. And then, not me, but lots of people around the world, trans was the word that came out of it, as you know that, um, you know, in America, African-American was the word, uh, the phrase that has ended up um, describing people African-American, and that's changed over the decades. And so ours has changed. So it's always the same thing, hasn't moved, same genetics, like you were, as uh, um, as a lesbian woman, um, I believe you, I don't know, did you know when you were young? Because I knew when I was five. No, I, I didn't actually, I came out quite late. Um, and I, you know, it w- was difficult for me actually because I, I I did the whole journey of of arguing to myself that I'd fallen in love with the person and not the gender and and, and all that sort of thing and I, I was raised in quite a religious household so um I didn't come out until my sort of early to mid 20s so I was I was really quite late well I, I didn't come out until 23 because I was scared but you know get my head kicked in um and then I said I got to do this and I came out at the same time as Boris Johnson was doing the Bullington Club so that was in uh, 85, 84, 85. So um, I think I had a better year than he did. And it was, it was, you know, being truthful and honest. So it's, it's the same thing. I, I was, I had been, I feel like I've got boy genetics, girl genetics. I think it's genetics or chromosomes or something in there. All I know is that I didn't get up on a Tuesday and say, I think I'll be trans. I think, you know, I, it just felt, I just felt that I wanted to express a more feminine side of myself. But I felt like a tomboy. I don't know. I wanted to be honest about it. So I told people and some people were positive and some people were negative. But the I should say that this controversial, I don't think it is that controversial. I think most people in Sheffield, particularly in the UK, the mm. world are going, all right, fair play to you. All right, live and let live. And some people are, make, are shouting very loudly from behind the firewalls. They're doing this online, you know, very loud, does, aggressive abuse. Does, and it, that's, does it annoy you that a lot of the people that are doing the loudest shouting on, on both sides, actually, of, of this debate happen to people, happen to be people who are not in the trans community? Um, no, I, I'm not going to go in and, and, and analyse it. And I don't really, I don't want to become the poster child for it. I, my activism is being do what I do. I, I was uh, doing comedy. I happen to be trans. I was uh, acting. Dramatic acting, I happen to be trans, and then uh, running a marathon, I happen to be trans. It's like I play the piano. No one goes on about me playing the piano, and I can play the piano, but it's it's really not part of the... <laughs> oh, oh. It, sounds, it sounds like that's really pained you there, Eddie, that nobody no, talks no, about your magnificent piano no, playing. It's quite nice. No, it, it is quite nice. Um, Judy Dance talks about it. She likes my piano playing. Anyway. But it's like uh, sorry, I'm, I just I just put my back out, lifting that name off the floor when you dropped it. No, no, Judy told me never name drop, so I try never. I, I did drop her name there, but um, you know, I have been dropping names to go go here. But it's just I have been around, and this is what you know. I think this is part of the positive thing of going for Sheffield is that my activism has been national, and international, four double six six four, working for Nelson Mandela's charity. I think that's great. That's positive. UNICEF ambassador. I think that's a good thing, and you know, highlighting things for the city of Sheffield. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And the trans thing is really, it's just like Barack Obama. It's an African American man, but that wasn't the centre of what he was. He was trying to be a president 
for America, for all Americans. And I will try and be a member of parliament for all Sheffield citizens. Well, you've supported the, the Labour Party. You donated under Blair. You've worked with Brown. You supported under Corbyn. You I've, supported I've, 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 don- I've donated under all of them. I've always given the same amount of money on every general election that's happened. So, um, and, and given that, your time as well, and I'm, I'm interested where your own Labour Party politics falls in that spectrum, because, you know, Blair to Corbyn, uh, to, to Brown and Keir, there's, there's quite a broad spectrum there. Well, I you know who I really believe in? I believe in the Labour Party, Ruth. And I'm just not going to play the game of going this way, that way. There's nearer left and there's further left. We're a broad church. Like in the Conservative Party, there was uh, the centre-right and the centre... Uh, oh, where were you? Centre-right and then the far-right. And now it's the far-right there. And oh, yeah, there but, no... but I'm happy to categorise myself as a dripping wet Eddie that is very centre no. of the centre-right. Oh, um, I, have, I have no not... problems. I have no, no problems you... with that. Ruth, you've got to use a, use a better word than that. That just doesn't sound right. You're One Nation Tory, aren't you? Isn't that what you are? Yeah, that's, right. that's exactly right, yeah. Yes, OK, I'm going to have to work on your speeches now. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but, but you're in the House of Lords, so it doesn't really matter. So anyway, um, yeah, this is me. I'm, I'm for the Labour Party to win, and I supported and I campaigned in over 125 constituencies from 2008 up to the present day. For, and I did this, uh, I'll do this for Keir, I did it for Jeremy, I did it for Ed, I did it for Gordon, for Tony. I, you know, I just, I will campaign. And um, I'm a fighter, I've been a fighter ever since my mum died, and I feel I can communicate with people. People seem to trust me because, well, you know, I've tried to play with a straight bat, and I've run a lot of marathons, and raised my, I've run with a saltire, I've run eight marathons with a saltire in Scotland, run with a Welsh flag, invented a flag for Northern Ireland, how about that? Um, which, do you want to hear about that? Yeah, go on. It wasn't the red hand of Ulster, was it? No, no you, you didn't see, have the, 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 the Northern Irish flag that's no, registered. No, no. no. You think, think about it. Think about it. I'm a, I'm a politician. I'm trying to go in there, and I, someone, if you look at my my uh, biography, uh, the chapter two was when I, me and my brother and the family lived in Northern Ireland, right? And I said to my brother, my older brother, I said, "What shall I call it? My time in Northern Ireland this time?" And he said, "Call it Wonderland." For us, it was wonderful. We had a wonderful time there. Mum was alive, playing with the kids. We started like this when I was three, four, five, living in Bangor, County Down, and Dad was working in Belfast, and that was that's how we sounded. And outside the house, in the house, we had to sound English. It was we did code switching, but it was a wonderful time. So I ran three marathons across Northern Ireland, and I invented a flag which was the bottle green of their football team, of the Northern Irish football team, and a white dove of peace in the top corner. And I thought that was kind of beautiful. But no one, everyone ignored me because they were probably going, who's the guy with the bird party flag there? Is that a wildlife thing? And so well, I was just not paid well, attention to the flag. But I did run the marathon. Let's get, you, let's get you back to the red flag flying high. Did you like that link there? That's, that's how a pro does it. Um, right. Why do you think that Labour has the, the, the best ideas? What, what do you well, we always do in government? Both, we're always fighting for the many rather than the few. That is the thing. You know, windfall tax... Any person in their right mind is going windfall tax. Even the head of Shell said, come on, let's pay a windfall tax. At this time, if I said this on Newsnight, if the country is on its knees, if people in our country are on their knees, can't the oil and gas companies get on their knees or at least on their haunches? And, you know, and I, I meant that. It, it, it seems immoral to say, oh, we're making this windfall because the, we've hiked the gas prices high because it's less around. And let's just say all we can do, what, what can we do? We just got to keep the money. No, let's, it should be getting the 21st century, I think is the coming of age of humanity. Eight billion people in the world. Everyone has the right to a fair chance in life. So that's everyone in our country, our continent, our world. And these hiking of gas prices, we understand it's coming from Vladimir Putin, but, you know, can't the gas, oil and gas companies, can't they pay the windfall tax and then it makes it so much easier for everyone and then we can live our lives. So we we constantly. Well, if you get if you get elected, if you if you take your seat in the government benches, if they win the next yeah. election, you'll be sitting next to Rosie Duffield, a Labour MP, that says she would rather be arrested than call you a she. I mean, when you speak to her, and when you see her in the tea rooms and in the corridors around Westminster, what would you like to say? It, to Rosie? People have got to just sort themselves out. It's the twenty first century. Join the twenty first century. You know, I'm I'm. You notice everyone's shouting a lot at me. You know how much I'm shouting back? Not at all. I'm just carrying on. You know, I exist, um, and trans people have had a lot of flack and a lot of abuse heaped upon them over hundreds, if not thousands, millions, or even millions of years. Um, probably just say in the thousands. But, um, you know, I'm just, I came out in 85, but being upfront and honest, it's truth, it's in me, it's not going anywhere. 
I don't know. What else can I do? Other people, if people are shouting and give them a hard time, they've just got to sort themselves out. Okay, Luke, thank you so much for talking. Just before you go, if 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 on the off chance you don't get Sheffield Central, will you stand again in another for another seat? Ah, well, that's a trick question. I am. It's not I am a trick here. question. It's it, a, it's, I mean, I understand you no. might not want to answer it because you're in the middle of a race, but it's not a trick question. No. It is. It's a, it's a good. It's a good trick question. Well done on that trick question, and that's my answer. Um, well done on your trick okay. question, and I salute your trick question. But now I'm here to be. Uh, the next candidate in uh, the fight for uh, Sheffield Central. Um, and there's great co contestants in there. And one of us will become, and I hope it is. Uh, the last time I spoke to you, it was just before you were starting to do uh, one marathon a day uh, for the whole of January with a stand-up gig at the end of it. Um, and, yeah. and now you're running for Parliament. I mean, what on earth is the, the drive that you have? Because most people would probably just want to sit up with a cup of tea at night, you know, and watch the telly instead. Well, what drove you, Ruth? You know, it, it's it's interesting. I don't know whether it, I should be, you know, I think drive is good. And if you're doing positive things, as I like to think I am, I think that's good. Um, but it might just be genetic. It might, I think it comes from my gran. I think it comes down, because granddad, who was a bus driver, but was quite happy to relax. And um, but Graham was, you know, she was always there working, working away, and that comes down to my dad to me. And I just think I've got it. And I had this thing of wanting to do things, wanting to make things. On my Twitter, I said, I think like an American. And really, the distillation of that is, I think like a an economic migrant, someone who comes in and wants to work, wants to work hard. Let's build it. Can we make it? The space race. I grew up in in the sixties and seventies, and and the space race happening, and and NASA going to the moon. I was. I loved that. That was a brilliant thing, um, you know, to be a small kid and landing on the moon. I was in Bishop Stortford when Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon. And I'm going to say this, this is kind of bigging myself up in a way, but well, I met Nelson Mandela because I was working for his charity, 46664. Wonderful to meet Nelson Mandela, fantastic. But Neil Armstrong was walking out. He was in the queue ahead of me as I went in, which is kind of an amazing queue to be in. So he, if, you look, if you don't know about Neil Armstrong, just a wonderful person who wanted to leave this world somewhat better, then he found it, and he did, and he wasn't an egotistical man. So he had the energy. You got the energy. I got the energy. You know, a number of us like to go do things, make things happen. And coming out as trans back in 1985, 37 years ago, seemed like a positive thing to do. So I did that. And I think when you said, I'm controversial, that's that. There isn't anything else that's controversial. Well, I, I said matters. that your bid was not without controversy. Um, and, and I think you would, yeah. even you would I'm agree not, that not... there has been a lot of noise around it, which... Perhaps surprised ah. even you, and I, and I know that you've been you've been you know tip of the speed on this for a long time. Yeah, well, you know, I've had people shout at me in the streets, fight me in the streets, uh, transphobic abuse over almost four decades now. Um, a spiking of it, I predicted, because you know I'm I want to become uh, an elected member of parliament, and therefore I'll be a trans member of parliament. And some people are transphobic, and they. You know, they just, they're going to make a lot of noise. And it's its a minority. It's about 2%. It's about 2%. All the people in the streets of the Sheffield, good luck, Eddie, go on. You know, a lot of people know me. Obviously, some people are not are voting for the other candidates. And there's a lot of, you know, six candidates going for it. So it's great to have uh, Paul Blomfield being honoured by so many people throwing their hats into the ring and fighting very hard to, to win uh, the selection. Well, but, a 27,000 majority has probably got a part of it, Eddie. Let's, let's, let's an open men's words. No, but he built, no, but no mince words. Go back to 2010. He won with about 136. He's built it. He's made it. That's Paul. That's Paul's legacy. So big shoes to fill. So, you know, fair play well, to it, him. It, I mean, I guess the question is, I mean, uh, looking back at, at your history, and I, and I know a lot of this not massively well known, but you were born in, in Aden in, in part of Yemen. You moved to um, Northern Ireland when you were one. You you kind of moved around a, a bit. You lost your mum when you were only six when you were at boarding school. I mean, there's 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 this this restlessness in in your whole life. And when you've done you know gigs in however many dozens of countries and in four different languages, you you've moved around so much. I, I guess if I was a member in Sheffield, a member of the Labour Party, which I'm not, but lived in Sheffield, I'd say why Sheffield? Well, it's the first city I chose to live in, as you said, born in Yemen. Lived near Belfast, near Swansea, near Brighton. First city I chose to live in was Sheffield. And I wanted to move up north. I'm a kid from the south and wanted to go north. And Sheffield would say, come here, accounting and financial management, Sheffield University, why don't you come on in? And I came in with straight A's in mathematics. And then I thought, I've done enough exams. I need to be, be creative. So when I dropped out, the people of Sheffield, the city of Sheffield supported me. So I want to pay it back. 
because I was taking the 82 bus out to Tinsley Viaduct, hitching up to the Edinburgh Festival, 12 Edinburgh Festivals over 13 years. But they were very supportive, great sense of humor, great character in Sheffield. So they were helpful to me. I want to help them back. And uh, I've got this energy. But above all, you know, we've got Manchester nearby, we've got Leeds nearby. Sheffield needs to be, I feel, even brighter, even stronger, even bolder on the map, a destination to come to. And I can help do that. I'm a big voice in Parliament. I can be. I'm not a big voice now, but I hope to be. And I, I'm known in the UK, known around the world. So that's what I'm saying. I, my activism has been national and international, running over 130 marathons, raising four million, not hundreds of thousands, but in fact millions for charity, Ruth. And, uh, and, uh, do and, you know, uh, I, I, I'll take my researcher outside and, and you know, yeah, and, and yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> see yes, to them millions. for that. <laughs> very proud. Of and also remember, this is not a standard thing, running 43 marathons in 51 days around the United Kingdom. That, that's not on a list of things to do. No one's bucket list has got that in. I just said, let's do this. I think I can do it, and maybe I can inspire younger people, other people, older people to say, come on, I'll try Couch to 5K, and I can raise some money, and it helps in the UK and around the world. Is this not good? Because everyone in the world has the right to a fair chance in life, and that's what I'm fighting for. A huge ask for someone who's going for Sheffield Central, but if you don't ask, you don't get. And I'm ambitious, and I was born in Yemen. People of Yemen having this hellish time, a hellish civil war going on and on and on. I've raised £100,000 for them in a terrible time of need, and no one pays attention to the poor Yemen. So I'm just going to keep fighting, and I want to fight so that 8 billion people have a fair chance in life. People, yeah, there'll be people listening to this, Eddie, and they'll be, be, be absolutely applauding how much you've done in how many countries you've done it the fact that you do have not just a national profile you've got an international profile you've been in hollywood movies uh you know you've you've worked in the states you've worked all over and thinking uh, you know these days actually the public square is so much bigger than the parliamentary chamber why would you give up that scope for something that's that's actually can, can be quite confined particularly for a backbencher well, you know, in Parliament, in Parliament, you can make laws and you can change laws. And so that is the difference. And I've always thought this. You can be, you know, a great activist, as I have been, and, and that can be very positive. But you get into government and the government machine, and you get into power, which I will help very hard for Keir Starmer to get into power. And then we can make things for the better, for, for the many rather than the few. And I am a good team player. And... And I think I'm an individual as well. I'll try and keep the individual and keep working with the team. So I think, I think most think... people would, would say that you're an individual, Eddie. I mean, even your worst critics probably say that you're a bit individual, no? No, I think you talk to people at Sheffield when I was up campaigning. I, I don't quite know where this is, Ruth, but I can work well in a team and I can work well on my own. I can lead a team or I can work in the team. I can just do this and I don't, I can't explain why, but I have sought to try and do that. If you're part of well, a team- no, I, I have to say, I, I would, I would uh, just to, to be upfront and honest about everything, the first time I, I met you was in Scotland two days before the independence referendum and you, me and Gordon Brown, which is the oddest lineup ever, did an event together in Mary Hill uh, in the community halls there. Uh, and, and you have, for years, you've, you've done your bit for the Labour Party under Blair, you donated lots of money, you've done activism. So like you, you've kind of, you've won your chops, you've won your spurs within the Labour Party. Party, right right oh right i'm just yeah no, no there's no I, question to that i'm just i'm just saying that, that i'm I, you 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 spoke as if i doubted it and i didn't doubt no, it because no, i've no. seen it no 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 it's the team player more it's the team player that's what i'm pushing on because you know if you come in keir starmer is, is running the labor party so you need to play in that team but i am all you know you, you people will wonder oh will your individuality get lost but i will try and keep both and i think i can do that and that's what i was trying to point out but in terms of your influences, um, you know, like you say, you went off to do accountancy in Sheffield as a student and ended up doing stand up comedy in, instead. It's it's quite the big U turn. So 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 where did that train of thought come from? Oh, it's quite a story. So anyway, uh, mum dies at six. Terrible devastation. Anyone lost someone in the family, you can understand that. So two years later, it was January of 1970, I saw a play. I was at a uh, school called Bead School in Eastbourne where my grandfather had been born, my dad had been born. And uh, uh, I just thought I need to be on stage because this guy, a guy on stage was getting great reaction. It was the love of the audience. I think I needed love. My mother had died. The audience was there and I thought I'm going to be a performer. That was age seven and I pushed and I tried and I cajoled those. Very determined, had no great luck initially, and eventually it went on. And then 
at 16, I made a deal with myself. I am going to be a performer. But my stepmother wasn't keen on it. My dad was rather worried about it. Got to go to university. So, okay, I'm going to university. I'm going to do accounting, financial management. I had straight A's going in mathematics. So I could do this route. But I just, I had, I thought, I'm, I, this is going to be a millstone around my neck. Getting accounting, financial management degree. Who doesn't get a job with that? I do not want to do that. There's some wonderful accountants out there. I know them. Some of them, I, I, they are my accountants. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be a performer. So I made this pact myself at 16. I'm definitely doing it. And at, 20, uh, at 19, I said, right, I'm out. And that's when it started. And I pulled out of university. Uh, as Steve Jobs and uh, Bill Gates also did pull out of university because they had a different way of doing things. They wanted to do it.